So this third clip, this right here, is my favorite clip right here. All right, all right. This is my favorite clip. <laughs> The Jenna Club is connecting the dots with TCM Media to bring you the Evening Social Podcast this evening. And it's a live stream broadcast on our Jenna Club TV YouTube channel, which is brought to you by New Wall Street, an investment education community. Please take the time to subscribe. I am your host, Coach Mo. Tonight's episode is brought to you in part by Wilson's Pizza and Grill, 1801 Quindaro Boulevard in KCK. The Jenna Club's vision uh, is to build a community of individuals that have an entrepreneurial mindset, that are economically independent, working in harmony. The Evening Social Podcast is a platform that provides an opportunity to highlight and introduce different career fields, choices, and pathways to our students and their families. It also helps mirror to our youth uh, the struggles and obstacles that others endure uh, in becoming who they are and their pathway to success. Tonight's guest, uh, I've waited a long time to get an opportunity to sit back down with, with this gentleman. He is from the middle of the map. Yep, that's the show me state. Born in 1985, this 36-year-old, 6'9", 220 retired pro athlete uh, is also the 211 Slavic League champion an entrepreneur business owner at Rise Home Buyers, Inspire Basketball Camps, and Knock the Hustle Podcast. Yep, he's a, a, a fellow podcaster. My guy, Eshawn Good Everywhere, Henry. My dude, what's good, man? <laughs> what's good, my guy? I appreciate guy? that, that uh, intro, man. You did your, you did your homework. <laughs> I got to do that, and man. I, I thought I was just a homie from around the way. <laughs> you are. But, but I got to also talk about your accomplishments, man. No this doubt. this platform here, and I gotta, I'm got i putting this out from the jump. This platform is not just uh, to um, for our youth and then to put in front of them career ex exploration right. and people who look like them that strive in a professional manner. But this podcast is also for us to give oxygen to those people like you. You know what I'm saying? Big ups to what you're doing. Appreciate continue that. to be that light in our community, and yeah, we hope to give you that oxygen to continue to go. Yeah, I appreciate so, that, man. That means a lot, bro. Man, good. So I got to always put this disclaimer out there. Beware of the time wrench. We do have a time wrench that works with us, so sometimes we'll be vibing, having a good time. And he will, you know what I'm saying, cut the mic some dings on you here. Yeah. I was going to keep us on time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. I just want you to know, you know, and I'm not saying no names, but Theo is here. <laughs> I mean, did I say that out loud? Okay, my friend. <laughs> so I'm excited to be here uh, with our venue uh, partner at the lovely Kinship Cafe in KCK, 719 North 6th Street here in Wyandotte County. All right, stop by. If you haven't noticed, tonight's episode is entitled Comfortable Everywhere. All right, that's our episode title tonight. Now, still holding true to the definition of uh, the word Jenna, which is an Ethiopian uh, word, um, we're not going to be uh, afraid to speak truth to power. Uh, sometimes people call that hard conversations, but it's only hard conversations because sometimes we talk about past emotions come yeah. up and we just uh, being honest and real uh, about our situations. So I, I, that's what I want to be able to do tonight. 
Um, I got to say this, <clears throat> our conversation, even though it's with me and you, it's not for me and you. Right. It's for those who come before us, those who come after us. We're going to honor those that helped us get here, and then we're going to pull up those uh, who's coming behind us. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. right. Absolutely. So let me start off by asking you, um, what is your profession or career? What would you say? Uh, I'm an entrepreneur, and, and before I get into that, uh, I really want to just shout out, you know, the, the word. I never heard that word before. Jenna, I never heard that in my life. And um, I feel like it's something I represent, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like when you find out the meaning to something, you can lean into that a lot more. So shout out to you for that. And as far as, you know, having hard conversations, man, like I'm just built for that. I'm built for it. It seems like every day, every two days, I'm having a conversation that I don't want to have. But, you know, the more I do it, the more comfortable I get being uncomfortable. And, and I wish that was a skill that I would have picked up 20 years earlier. So shout out to you for those. And um, just being able to have those to me, man, the opportunity for growth is, 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 is amazing. So um, as far as me, yeah, entrepreneur, uh, somebody who I feel like is uh, opportunity walking. Um, I feel like it's opportunity all around us. And I feel like uh, I'm just somebody who's looking for a way to solve a problem. That's how I look at myself. I'm trying to bridge the gap between one and the other. You know, this is your issue. That's their issue. Can I be that bridge to make sure that, you know, we create win, win, win situations? So um, the capacity of that changes. I'm in a big transitional period. I'm sure we'll get into it at some point. But, yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty much what I see myself as. Okay, I like that, man. So um, I gotta ask a few questions. So, um, are you married? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Five years. Five years. Yep. All right. Do you have kids? Two of them. Three, three years old, little Ishan, and six months old. Well, seven months old today. Okay. Seven months old, uh, Israel. Mm -hmm. Israel same. Gotta ask you that, man, because we want our youth. To, sometimes our youth, they're working in school. Sometimes our youth don't see us. They right. don't humanize us. Right. They just see, especially successful. Oh, this person's mm -hmm. always been this person. Has always been successful. Right. Mm -hmm. They don't really see that you. Oh, you were a kid too, or that you have a family. Right. You know, mm -hmm. that you're a family man, a father. You know what I'm saying, a husband. Yeah. So we want. We just want to humanize you, so they understand. Uh -huh. You know that you have a life too. Yeah, and if 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 you follow, you know, social media is a high, highlight reel. So. Yeah. Post a lot of pictures of the kids, you know, me and wifey would be chilling. We fight, you know what I'm saying? We argue. I'm going home. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It's cool. And the same with my kids. They both cry uncontrollably yeah. sometimes. Sometimes at the same time. It's life. So so I like to highlight the, the reality of whatever it is. Yeah. Because I think we can, you know, romanticize a little bit about what something is. Oh, I wanna be this, I wanna be that. Well nah, it's it's a whole other side to that and just understand it. Pray for the rain. You're gonna have that mud too. So um, that's that's what I'm looking forward to most about talking talking about tonight. Because I think it's you know in these type of venues, I think we talk a lot about showing our kids something different. And I, I'm an absolute advocate for that. But I think we gotta also talk to them about you know some of the some of the nuances of when it's not so great and how to work through those situations. And I'm gonna give some real life situations where I've been in situations where it's like, man, it just it don't look great for me right now. But you know, things, you just keep working, you get through it, you know, you develop yourself. So that that side of it for me is exciting to talk about because maybe somebody else can get through something that they're going through because of hearing what some of the stuff I've been through. And I love it. That's exactly what this platform is to be for our youth and, and, and their families, for our community, is to be uh, a platform where they can see the struggles the obstacles that one right. went through. So we're not telling them to be, uh, you know, in real estate or be a basketball player. What right. we're telling them is look at these examples, see that there's a way to be successful, and then use what other people did in their struggles to for your struggles. Absolutely. Use it. So that I, yeah. I love it. We're on the same page. Um, and let's get into it, man. Yeah, no so let me, first let me ask you, I got to ask you this. <clears throat> you know, who, who would you say, uh, was one of your biggest influences or inspiration in basketball? Um, if people don't know that six nine frame was used for basketball, yeah. you know what I'm saying. So if they don't know that. Yeah. Let's talk about. It. But who would you say some of your biggest influences, inspirations? Like every other night, this kid Mike, Scotty. Yeah. You know, we watching them. We, I, yeah. I still remember watching Mike switch hands on Magic, the big two TV. You know, yeah. Um, going outside trying it. Like, how did he do that? So. You know, you're not gonna find a kid one in the eighties that's that's in, in, you know love the game that wasn't influenced by him. So that kind of go without saying. Um, 
Kobe was more, you know, we a little older. So Kobe was a big influence on me. I was older, I could process stuff different. Love his mentality, love just the way he saw stuff. Um, but locally, it was a guy that may be a little bit under the radar. He's probably six, seven years older than me. His name is Cortez Groves. Oh, and yeah. for me, and I know you know him, <laughs> yeah. but I encourage people who are watching this to go, you know, look him up on Google, YouTube. And for me, um, when I saw him, he was 6'4", six, 6'5", six, shoot the lights off the ball. He could, you know, just do everything. Like, he was the best basketball player I ever saw when I was 13, 14 years old. And I'm like, man, who are you, bro? Like, I, I literally asked him that question. Who are you? What do you do? We hooped him one day, and isn't it? he's killing, killing murder. So I'm like, hey, bro, who are you? He's like, I, I'm Cortez. I'm like, what you do? He's like, man, I play ball. I'm like, why do you play for? I play in Australia. Then he, biggest stunt ever. He, he, he pushed the alarm on his 1999 Navigator. <laughs> and, you know, he had the church. He said, yeah. Then it started up. I'm like, man, I, that's what I'm going to be. I'm, I'm going off yeah. If he had played for the Spurs or the Rockets, I probably would have gone, I'm going to NBA. Because just seeing it, like embodying that, you know, that's that was that made it real for me. I, I, I did come from a basketball co uh, family a little bit. We had a couple ball players in my family. But it wasn't like a basketball culture. You know, nobody mm -hmm. made me play. Nobody, at times, you know, I was hustling rides to practice trying to figure it out. Mm -hmm. So I just didn't have that 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 pull like that where I felt like that was naturally what I was going to be. I kind of developed that on my own. But Cortez, huge influence for me, bro. Yeah. And I told him that, too. I told him that plenty yeah. of times. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Cortez, smooth, man. Smooth. Yeah, he, yeah, he had one of the smoothest mm -hmm. games I've seen. Yeah. Man, so before I get into this other segment, I got to hit you with one of this, man. Now talk to me about, you know what I'm saying, how's my dirty work family doing, man? Uh, my people. <laughs> so, How are they doing? So that's my, those are like my brothers, man. Like, I, he just called me, like right now. Like, yeah. Literally, I told that's him. That's my about, guy, man. Love him, man. I told him I was about to do, do that. But if they good, you know, I check in every every few weeks. Um, yeah. Uh, I talk to Mario a whole lot. You know, mm -hmm. we talk every week, every other week. I was just at his daughter's birthday party. But, man, that's, that's my family. That's my family. I, I look at, man, like we've been through some things together. Like I, I used to sleep on me's couch, bro. I dropped out of college trying to figure out my life. I slept on that dude's couch. And his family, they just embraced me. They toughened me up a little bit and gave me a little bit of street smart. So, man, they great. And I, I'm grateful for, you know, just being around me. You know, just mm -hmm. family full of men, a bunch of thorough dudes who, who don't take no, no stuff. And they good. Good. We good, yeah. Good, good, man. Love them, man. Um, we get an opportunity to tell them I said, what's up, man? What's up? They see this, man. What's up, love y'all. Appreciate everything. What's you know, up? they always been 100 with me, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Always. Yeah. Always been about their word, kept their word. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I remember when me had me over to the house, you know what I'm saying, yeah. doing music and just pulling up. Man, love them, man. Appreciate them. I know that was a... A good influence or a big part of your life, so I wanted to make sure we brought that up too. Yeah, for sure. One of the big things that I also want our listeners to understand is is family looks different. Yeah, family is not always for sure. the traditional people who your blood is. Family can also be your friends or other people that stick with you, and that net is one of our biggest keys is mm -hmm. networking, relationship building, and networking, and that net can be built. And just because you may be missing some pieces in the net traditionally, right. doesn't mean it can't be filled untraditionally with people that are whole strong just as much or even more right. sometimes in family. For sure. So I wanted to bring that up, man, because I knew that correlation, yeah, but yeah. also I had to shoot out my guys, man. Much love yeah. to them and everything. Yeah. And yeah. they know what's up, man. Who's my dude? Good, yeah. good, good. <laughs> well, now I got to get into uh, one of my favorite segments, man. Yeah. One of my favorite segments, the, it's the fun questions, icebreaker segment. Yeah, no Let's have a little fun Let's with you go. Come on. for a second. Okay, this segment is brought to you by Drip Ultra Pure Water. Well, our guy, David Jordan, appreciate him, man, putting this together. And uh, I'm going to start the first part of this off uh, with a would you rather. We're going to have this on this one. Would you rather? Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Let's see. Would you rather build a giant snowman uh, or a snow family? I think uh, I just think of my kids, mm -hmm. and for me, it got to be Snow Family. Cause my little dude, man, he's so funny. Everybody think they kid the funniest on earth. Right. My little dude, he he feel like he got to relate everything. He got to see him in everything. Mm -hmm. So I, 
we do a giant snowman, that'd be funny. But if he see himself, when it start melting, like, hey, what's wrong with my head? Where my head go? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I just do think about what's the funniest for him. Okay. So yeah, probably same. Okay. You know? So a bunch of Olaf skin. <laughs> Ah, so you ain't hitting the Frozen? No, no, yeah. Oh, man, you got kids and you ain't rock with Frozen yet? I ain't seen it yet, man. Oh, man, it's, it's two of them out, man. You got to hit that out, check man. it out, bro. Got to check that out, man. Yeah. Okay. All right. We're going to be... I'm gonna help you. Do three, so I'm gonna help, help you get up. I'm gonna help you get on to your uh, onto your movie game. Yeah. My son they got me. If it's if it's out, I probably didn't see it. You know it's funny because I said that today. I was watching for a couple hours and I was like, man, I need something I can watch, not this yeah. little nonsense. Like something I can at least follow along with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, but these, that's, that might be the these are some that you can follow me and they the kids will be all into them because they got I'm all the characters and all that. Man, he's not. Nah. What's up? He's nine, third grade. Yeah, What's up? doing good, man. Talking, moving around, man, moving, playing basketball. He, oh, that's cool. He playing basketball. Is he left hand? Left hand? Left hander. I don't know how I remember that. Yeah, <laughs> he left hander, man. How's that coach dad though? Ah, it's tough, right? So now I'm gonna keep it real, okay? I I never wanted to coach, you know what I mean? Because I want to be a father. Yeah. And I don't know if I can turn off the coach father, yeah. you know, getting home. You know you know me. You know how I, when I'm in coach mode, I'm in coach mode. I don't know if I can come out of that. Right. So I never wanted to coach him. Yeah. But he's on these teams and he's going and he's starting to pick it up more and he wants to play more, you know. And he asked me about six months ago, Daddy, how come you don't coach him? And I'm like, ah, son, I, you know, I got a lot going on, and you know, you got a good, you got a good coach now, you know. I, I'm, I'm there to support you. I'm at practice, and the games out there. So, <clears throat> but how, do practice. Feel, how, how, how do you feel if you see him coaching, being coached, and you don't, you know? So let, let me hit you with this. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm coming. I'm keeping it all the way 100. So we in practice. And his coach has a lot going on. He's got a great coach. I've coached with him for years. He's got a great coach. But he got a lot going on, a lot of teams. And a lot of the people that were helping him have kind of dissolved the yep. way. So he's trying to do two, three teams at once, you know. So I'm noticing that practice is not giving the kids the skills they need and what they're going. Uh, and then I'm, I'm seeing them get to games, and they're getting to games. They're not able to do certain things and move. And so I went and watched a couple games, and I watched my son make some plays in the game that I'm like, man. But I know it's translated from they ain't getting it in practice. Right. And it's not, and I'm telling you, I love Coach, and Coach is a great coach. Right. But he's got a lot going. He's got three teams in practice trying yeah. to jump. So, and then sometimes he's got some people helping that they ain't yeah, basketball yeah. coach. Yeah. So I'm like, Coach, let me help you, you know what I'm saying, tighten up practice. You know, I don't want to coach. All right, let me tighten up practice. Let me get you a, I can help you with practice skills. You know what I'm saying? Now, mind you, I coach with him way back out. He's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I come practice schedule, going to be tight. He's like, yeah, yeah. Man, show me how to do this is what he tells me. He's suffering me. He, he, he's suffering me. Yeah, I got you right I, he suffered me. I'm like, okay, I get. I'm like, man, you know how to do this. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, can you just be on this end? I'm going right. down here, and I'm like, man, I'm like, look, I'm only helping in practice. I don't want to be on the sideline, you know, with my son. I, I don't, man, all the way till we get to this Saturday, bro. Yep. We roll up in the gym. Ain't no coach. Now I've been at practice coaching. You know what I mean? We roll. Ain't no coach. Text. He ain't answering. The parents is like they see me now. They see me in practice working with the kids, you know, and so they come to me like, uh, "Coach, I hear you coaching." I'm like, "Nah, I don't coach. I just help in practice." And they like, "Huh?" I'm like, "Nah, I don't. I don't want to coach. You know, I'm I, I'm going to the bench. Yeah, I go sit on the bench. I'm sitting down like." I got about four or five parents keep coming to me like. And I know you're going to coach now. I know you ain't going to just let the coach. So one of the mothers goes over there. She's standing over the sideline, boom. And so another one of the mothers comes up to me. She's like, Coach Mo. Now, you know that's my grandson over there. And I'm like, yeah. She was like, and you know you coach my other grandson. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. She said, and you know your son over there. I said, yes, ma'am. That's why I'm over here. She said, well, my other grandson and your son need the same thing that my oldest grandson got. Gotcha. 
I know you're not gonna let that lady over there that don't know nothing about basketball stand over there on the sideline and you sitting over here. Right. What was I supposed to say? You can't say no. <clears throat> so I went over there, coached the game, you know. I told my son, you know, a couple different things, you know, I'm telling him, like, look, man, I hope you don't think because I'm over here, you're about to get a free ride. You know, I, I told you, but I, I don't want to coach you because I'm going to be hard on you. Right. You know what you look me in my face and say? What do you say? I know, Daddy, that's what I need. Man, see, you got to love that. Ah, I, mean, I was on fire, bro. Yeah, I, I was that. on fire. I'm like, man, let's go. So we start going. I'm on the boys. We going, you know, I'm telling tell them. Next thing I tell him, like, look, man, I don't care what you do. I don't even care if you score. But you got to play hard. Yeah. We going to figure the rest out. You got to play hard. And that's life. You know what I'm saying? That's the first part. We'll get the rest. I'm going to stop talking about it. I took him out the game for not hustling. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Sit him on side. Another little cat out the game not hustling. We yeah. talking on him. Go get it. And they sitting right there. You know what I'm saying? They hungry. Now I can see they hungry. But I see they, they it's turning though. Right. Like they starting to understand and see and move. So end up having a good time. You know. They all telling me, Coach, you're you going to keep coaching. You know, that's what the kids are saying. So I don't know, man. We're going to see. Yeah. You know. But man, it's, it's, a, it's a tough thing because time is a valuable asset. Um, and if you can't, like we were saying off camera, like if you can't be fully committed, yeah. it's tough. So I'm, I've been there. You know what I'm saying? I know. I that's know. my biggest thing yeah. is that I'm already committed. They have practice Mondays and Wednesdays. So I'm there Monday, every Monday. Wednesdays, I already got some things going. It's hard for me to commit. So that's. That's one thing, but I got to work it out, man. One thing I, I do say is, I mean, my son didn't ask me that. Yeah. You know, he didn't got up and asked me, so I might got to make some adjustments. That's something um, I want to be available for. You know, I want to be able to inspire my life where I'm available. I still don't know if I'm going to coach my kids yet, and mm -hmm. I just assume they even want to play. Right. I, I pray they do. But, um, yeah, that's that's something I'm looking forward to, just be able to spend time with them, show them what I didn't know, let them get some of those lessons yeah. earlier. And it's a big principle in that. Um, yeah. That, that I want to touch on at some point too. Yeah. So yeah, it's all good. Okay. Let me finish this. See, you didn't got me over here and you didn't got me talking. I done got off the fun question. That's, that's, hey, that's a skill. That's a skill. Bro. I know, man. That's See, oh man, that's that Raytown education, man. <laughs> I went to Raytown one year. Uh you 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 gotta understand like so <laughs> people don't feel People want you to be invested, bro. You yeah. know what I'm saying? You gotta ask yeah. questions, man. Yeah, ain't nothing wrong with that, man. Questions. Get into it. I love yeah. it. See, I love this. Yeah. Man, this, we were supposed to do this a long time. I have not sat down and talked with you yeah. for a while. A so minute. that's what people don't realize we that really, we go way back. We ain't really, that's to me what we should talk about. But yeah. you see, we're gonna you, get to that you too. We're gonna got get it. to that too. Yeah, you got it. Go oh, ahead. yeah, but you know, I, I, I always get the keys mm -hmm. up. I don't, you know what I'm saying? I ain't got to drive the whole time. Yeah, no doubt. Oh, let's be, we're gonna finish this, man. Get to this this fun question. Let me just knock it out. Would you rather eat gingerbread cookies or eat freshly baked pop? Pop. All right. Would you rather go skiing or ride a sled? Sled. Sled. Skiing, man. That's that's next level. Okay. Man, I didn't know we just had the you know the Olympics. I've seen them folks, man. You know they don't. You don't want to just go out there like that. Sled. Okay. So you ain't never been skiing. Never. Okay. All right. I used to live in Sweden. And <clears throat> That's why I'm wondering, like, you ain't never been skiing? No. no. So, I, I, did yeah. nobody get you out on no slopes or not? Nah, man. You know, I had one of, one of my coaches, bro, he'd be like, how, you know, you got OG to go fishing? Mm -hmm. That's how he used to, he used to go skiing. He was mm -hmm. an assistant coach, he was retired. He'd be like, man, I ain't going to that damn boy. Why? First snow, got to hit the slope. But like, he wouldn't play around. In uh, northern Finland, crazy. Mm. Exactly how our old OGs go fishing. And yeah, yeah, yeah. At 5 a.m., like, I got to hit the slope. Crazy to me, so, <laughs> okay. Interesting place. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, would you rather live without hot chocolate or drink apple cider every day? Apple cider. Oh, okay. You're an apple cider fella. I mean, natural. Okay. Um, you know, it's from the earth for the most part. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 You're on your earth kick. I forgot. Yeah. Okay. Um, would you rather uh, have a snowball fight or hang out by the fire? Hey, I'm gonna chill, chill out. Yeah, let me laugh. Come on, man. Now, you know you should be on the snowball fight. Man, my little dude, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you, they about to be at that age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, it's, it's funny. You turn into a dad, you just get impressed by anything. Yeah. Man. I'm, I'm uh, shoveling the, the, the driveway, man. That's, that's, I got this electric shovel. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm excited to use it. 
I'm getting everything together, trying to figure it out. Man, this dude, is he's two years old at the time, man. He launched the snowball back in my head. <laughs> I was not watching. I'm like, who taught you how to do that? <laughs> I ain't never took you out there to do that. Right. But he, and he had some force on it. I'm yeah, like, yeah. turn around, that dude was smiling. Big, big as I don't know what. And I'm like, man, this little dude, man. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm looking forward to them ages okay. where we do stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. All right. But for now, I'm lounging. Lounging. Okay, I got you. So would you rather jump on the polar bear's back or wrestle three penguins in a swimming pool? Team, easy. <laughs> I don't know. Wrestle three penguins in a yeah, swimming pool? Yeah, gotcha. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to come out all right with them. Okay. <laughs> Better than jumping on the bear's yeah, back. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> right. Penguins ain't too big to throw it on cold. Them beaks is cold. Yeah. They are, but... Bear, seven hundred pounds. Yeah, okay. I, 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 I mean, hey, I, I'll get you. Yeah. So you didn't want to go skiing. You was, so let me ask you. So would you rather be go snowboarding or ice skating? Ice skating. Ice skating. So I'm you like ice skating. I'm a high adrenaline guy. I don't need to do a lot. You know what I'm okay. saying? So all them acrobatic games, I'm, I'm cool. So do you ice skate though? Nah, never mind. Never mind. Okay. Okay. I had to ask you because you went real quick with ice skating. You like ice skating. I look at it like, uh, oh, like <laughs> the, the most moderate thing I can do is like, I don't need a bunch of action. Okay, I, I got you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. So have you ever been roller skating? Yeah, when I was younger. Okay. I had that awkward phase where I grew like five inches in my sophomore year. Mm -hmm. I wasn't really comfortable. On my skin. Yeah. So it's okay. like, man, you know, you go from five nine to six four. Yeah. I ain't, I ain't on the skates, man. I got you. Okay. I, I got you. Like I that, understand. You know yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. I understand. It took me a minute to get comfortable with that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Let's see. Would you rather wear a hat forever or wear one mitten forever? <laughs> <laughs> so you gonna LL Cool J? <laughs> no, my, my, my fitting collection gonna be on point. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you in the shower and everything. In the shower and everything. Yeah. It's gonna get wet. I need, my, I need my hands. Man. You gonna need your hands? Yeah. Well, you still got your hands. You got a mitten on. You nah. Just, it's <laughs> nah, I got. I got. I would have had man. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Right, that got you. All right. All right. So let, let me let us see. Okay, I'm gonna ask you this one, then we're gonna move to something else. Would you rather live in a Kansas snow globe or live in a Missouri outhouse? Missouri, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. We, uh, man. man. But even though it's a snow globe in Kansas, you, you're gonna go to an outhouse in Missouri. You go, <laughs> man. Like, <laughs> all right, man. Well, let me ask you this now. A little more, uh, finish up, and we done with the would you rather's. But these two, I gotta ask you. Yeah. So, um, you watch movies? Yeah. You do? Yeah. Okay. So, who is the best movie villain that you've ever seen? Villain. In all time? Movie villain. Best Probably movie. Probably the villain. Joker. The Joker. On um, Batman, uh, uh, the Dark Knight. Dark Knight, Probably Batman. off the top of my head, it's, it's the Joker. Or if you ever seen what's the Gerard Butler movie, um, Law Abiding Citizen. Yeah, he was really a villain. Yeah, so but I, I like I like you know like in life we get fall out tomorrow. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Something didn't happen. You did some wrong, I did some wrong. It ain't no bad guys like they make it look in a lot of movies. You know, it's it's gray area there. You know, yeah. And I felt like. He's kind of the bad guy, but most people, especially if you got kids, you got a family, you can relate to what he did. So for me, yeah, he smart. I like dudes that's smart and tough. You know, mm -hmm. I always relate to him type of cat. So yeah, he probably up there. The Joker was that too. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I wanted them too. Okay, okay, yeah. I like that. Okay, I like that. Okay. So now I gotta ask you this. I gotta put this in because of basketball, and then we're gonna leave this set. <clears throat> We've been talking about uh, if we were, and I'm having this segment on here because I'm compiling some, some names. We have a 50 greatest Kansas City uh, basketball players right. list. Yeah. All right. If we had this 50 greatest Kansas City basketball players, we can reach, you know, both sides of the water. You just, right. you just off the top of the head, give me six names that you know should be on there. Now we're gonna put the disclaimer. All right. 
we are, I'm only asking for six. There's a lot going to be left off. Right. So I just asked you off the top of your head for six. Ain't like yeah. you had days to think about yeah, this. Yeah. So nobody can get upset that you don't put a I, name on there. I think I do want to give a disclaimer in the sense of like, man, before, like I wasn't really tapped into the basketball community as a whole. Mm -hmm. I really play AU on a mainstream level. Like I was just kind of really sheltered by like my little neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Went on social media. I didn't know what such and such was doing over there. Mm -hmm. But yeah, um, I would say Jerron Rush, 100%. Kareem Rush, 100%. It's the top six. Quinn Day, Marcus Walker, for sure. He was my dude with both of them. Um, then it get to Earl Watson, 100%. Uh, Brandon Rush on there too. Uh, okay. Brandon, Brandon Rush on there too. But I can't leave off Cortez Grove just because of the personal influence that he yeah. had on me. I would say Nate Johnson, both of them. Mm -hmm. You know, you said six, but I, I knew yep. both of those yep. dudes was to see them. Like, Nate, one of, one of them not that much older than me, but it's just like, dang, this dude was a different type of player. So, yeah. I'm sure when I leave, I think about two other people too. But yeah. them, them, them names right there off the top of my head. Okay. Yeah. I like that. That was a nice list. Yeah. Uh, that's, a, sure. that, that's a nice that's a list. That's a starting lineup you don't want to see right now. Oh, there. man. <laughs> the Rush Brothers plus Rush man. Rush Brothers Come plus on. Earl. Yeah. Plus both Nates. Man, it's tough. Marcus. Man, Mark, and you, then you put Marcus and Poo in there. Oh, my God. Ooh, man. and Cortez. God. Man. Yeah, that's a that's a that's that's one of them, uh, the, the, the million dollar basketball league yeah, team. Yeah, you don't see them dudes losing nowhere, man. Man. And they proms and high yeah, school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh. It's a packed gym. Okay. Oh, yeah. You know, Definitely. You know, Standing room only. Man, I appreciate you letting us hit a little bit of that fun time with you. We're going to move to another segment. We're going to talk just a little bit quickly about childhood a little bit. Yeah. All right? Yeah. So uh, I don't want to forget to remind um, everyone that <clears throat> our live stream broadcast is brought to you by New Wall Street, an investment education uh, community. Uh, this episode is brought to you by Wilson's Pizza and Grill, 1801 North 18th Street in Kansas City, Kansas. Uh, and we are here at the lovely Kinship Cafe at 719 North 6th Street in KCK as well. Um, let's talk just a little bit. Where were you born? I was born in Kansas City, Missouri. Okay. Yeah. Born in Kansas City, Missouri. Um, let's talk um, about family a little bit. Yeah. Uh, we want to talk about your relationship, like with moms and your dad. Right. But let's first talk about relationship with moms. So how, how was your relationship with your mom growing up and then till now? So I uh, <clears throat> love my mom to death, man. One of the toughest people I know. Uh, my mom and my dad were married when I was born. I'm the fourth out of five. So my mom had five kids between 1980 and 1987. Grew up super close, didn't always have everything. You know, we had to boil water, take baths a couple times. We had to light candles to see a few times. They divorced in 92-ish, and I just distinctly remember that time. Like, when they divorced, I just noticed a very big change in my confidence and how I saw the world. And honestly, man, I kind of villainized my mom. Kind of looked at her like the bad guy because she left my dad. Or And, and you know, she had her reasons, for sure. But um, still, I always took care of her. We never went without. She always found a way to make it make it work. She did get rem remarried, but I would say my mom raised our five of us um, 85% by herself, which, you know, she probably made 40 grand a year, I'm guessing. In the 90s, that's not a bad salary, but five kids, you know? And we overall was good kids. You know, we had our little stuff for real. We, you know, everybody graduated high school. Everybody, you know, is, is gainfully employed and, and, and doing fine for themselves now. But I was very much the fourth out of five, and I think that my personality was kind of like, let me just, you know, stay out the way. Let me just be kind of quiet. You know what I'm saying? I'm not the youngest, but I'm, I might as well be the youngest because I was the youngest boy, youngest boy. Um, so it's kind of like was was kind of developed this kind of let me stay out the way type of type of mentality. Um, <coughs> so, but yeah, overall good childhood. Pretty much played basketball almost every day or did some type of sport. Average nineties kid, man. I'm watching sports. I'm hanging out with my friends. I'm walking to the park, staying out till the street lights come on. And um, one thing that I thought was interesting that I thought about, I bought my first house that I actually owned about seven months ago in July. And um, I thought about it. I'm like, dang, I've never lived in the same house for more than three years. My whole life it was crazy. We moved every two years. It's just just how it was. We moved from that place to that place that place to that place. 
I didn't go to school to, from, from the time um, my parents divorced. I didn't go to the same school three years in a row. So it's interesting because that carried right into adulthood. Two years of college, two years of that college. One year overseas here, two years overseas there, 14 countries in nine years. So, you know, like my life very much has been like, let me transition, let me adjust, who am I around? Like, how do I fit in here? Like, what's going on here? Like, you learn to kind of read. We we lived in, you know, we lived on 50th and Paseo. You know, and we also lived, that's my grandma's house. That was kind of always like home base. But we also lived, you know, in, in the lower income areas in Olathe. You know, it's, it's crazy how different every few years was, you know, and it, it, it got stable more toward the time I graduated high school, but I got really used to change. And what I notice now as an adult, it's like things are the same two, three, four years in a row. I just get bored and I got to go create something. I got to go change something. I, I kind of burn out after three years because of how I came up. So um, it's going to be interesting to see, you know, the stability that I, that I pray I'm able to give my kids how that affects them 10, 15, 20 years from now. Yeah. Nice, nice. I appreciate you sharing that, man. Because yeah, no, no. that's one thing that a lot of our, our youth, our listeners, uh, they deal with. They deal with uh, constant changes in their environment and, right. and movement and changes with friends and changes in schools, right. changes in housing. And then it's even changes sometimes in the living situation, not just the house, but right. you know, you may have been living in a place where it was just you and your immediate family to living in a place where you're living with your auntie and, and her kids and cousins, Definitely you know. Right. I mean, just different things. And for them to hear that, you know, some other people have been through that, but they've come to the other side to be successful, I, you know, that's, one, that's a big thing. I can definitely relate to that. And I remember in seventh grade, we moved back with my grandma, my mom, me, and my uh, I had an older brother that didn't live with us at the time. But me and my brother, who was close to my same age, my younger sister and my older sister, we all lived in my grandma's house upstairs. It was probably 800 square feet. We all you know, shared one shower in grandma's house. Go downstairs and take a shower. Everybody used the same shower. And I remember, like, that was before I really identified as a basketball player. I was kind of short. I liked to play. I wasn't really on the team. And I think, like, well, what you doing, giving kids, like, a home base, something that they can have the stability of, like, no, I do that. Like, this is who I am. This is what I am. I think for those types of kids, it's that much more important. Because I could imagine um, if I'd identify, had, a, had a, something that I identify as, where it's like, no, nah, I'm going to go find the basketball kids because I'm a basketball player. Or we're the debate team because I'm, I'm on the debate team. Or whatever it was, that would have helped with all the change. Sometimes you can't control change. Mm -hmm. You know, parents trying their best out there. Right. But I think having something to go back to is huge for those kids. Huge. Yeah. yeah, I appreciate you sharing that. Yeah, no doubt. Okay. Um, you didn't mention it, but let's touch on it just a little bit. Yeah. Um, touch on the relationship with your father a little bit as after the divorce and up to now. Weirdly enough, man, and um, I think it's hard for my mom. Like, me and my dad was probably always a little bit closer. And I think that's because for him, I don't know, we just I just always liked the dude energy. Let's go to the barbershop. Let's go to the car wash. You know, he had friends that was me, you know, like me, I always thought that was cool. Let me hang around the dude. Like, what y'all doing? That's how I am. That's how my son is. And um, so we still really close to this day. Yesterday was his 67th birthday. No, nice. Yeah, <laughs> I picked him up some salmon, some lobster, <clears throat> some potatoes. You know, he came up to the crib, ate good, hung out with the little dudes a little bit. And um, we still really close. And uh, one of my goals in the next 18 months is to retire him put him in a situation where he can just kind of live. Ain't got to worry about too much. Ain't got to really work and work if he wants to, but just, you know, help him escape from the, the, the hustle of life. Mm -hmm. Let me find my next thing real quick, because that's why the podcast that I never released was called Knock the Hustle. Because, like, man, that should be a season. It shouldn't be forever, you know? It should be mm -hmm. a season. And we, we going to get more into that later. But, like, if you hustle, and that's how you eat. Don't get me wrong. We want to hustle. We want to figure it out. We want to work hard. But it's, 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 it's a way to do it in a way where, like, you can remove yourself from that. And when we get to, you know, talking more about business, I'm going to tell you exactly what my experience with that has been and why I think that can lead to, you know, bad eating habits, 
bad overall quality of life, and in a lot of cases, probably you know people dying early from our culture because we so like we we kind of embody that we hustle and hustle. It's a way to do that. It's a context to that that has to make sense, you know. And I think we really should look at our lifestyle as much as we work hard, you know, grind for sure, do those things, but quality of life, like it, it got to be a balance there. So um, I like to, in my lifetime, that's one of my biggest things really just to help him transition to, hey, chill out, you know what I'm saying? Your grandkids can come over, take them to the car wash, take them to the park, just chill out. And that's a big one for me. So, yeah. yeah. Okay, I like that. You gave me some goals too. Yeah, no I like that, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I, I always talk mm-hmm. about um, having something to reach for. You know what I mean? And you and you got to not only just have something to reach for, and you got to have a different level of goals. That's one thing that we speak about in our after school program. It's like, what is the goal? What do you want? All right, no, I got it. That's what you want when you get this over. And what do you want next week? Right. What do you want in three months? Like, you got to have small goals that lead you to your main objective goal. And balance goals too, you know, like one of my goals that I, I, I started writing down the 10 things that I want to do every day. Mm-hmm. And one of them is spend 30 minutes with my kids and no, te- no, no electronics around. Mm-hmm. Like that's a goal, you know, what does that look like? That's, you know, three and a half hours a week of just real time with, with my boys. You know, my business, I deal with a lot of older folks. A lot of older folks who kind of transition and they don't want to, you know, they can't manage their houses no more. <clears throat> came into their houses no more, and they want to transition to something else. They're selling all their assets to go do something different. And they all say the same thing. I just, I just need time. You know what I'm saying? I want to spend more time with my grandkids. I want to spend more time traveling with my husband, my wife, whatever it might be. I just don't want to spend my time maintenance in that property. So, you know, it's kind of cool because in my mid-30s, I get to look at what retirement looks like for people who have sometimes planned really well really well but for them it's a trade-off it's like you know this these properties are good they 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 made me my money many times over i'm gonna sell them for triple what i paid for them years and years ago um but for me it's about the time let me go spend my time doing something else so i i'm working toward you know implementing that into my life in a lot of ways too and it's the hardest thing i ever had to do it's the biggest transition i've ever had to make just kind of moving from this kind of hustle mentality where it's go, 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 go. Like plan better, you know, delegate, like learning to delegate, take your hands off the wheel, let somebody else do it. Man, that's tough. But yeah. that's, that's to me, the key where I can kind of be free to do different things, you know? Stuff like this, stuff like, just different stuff, you know? Yeah. Mindset is one thing. My cousin used to always say, I never could catch it, you know what I'm saying? He used to <coughs> always ask me, like, you know what I'm saying? What's the, what's the most expensive possession you can have? And I say, he's like, no, it's time. You know, and then I'm like, what? You know, it, it, I didn't click. Man. Didn't click until later on, you know, I started thinking about it, and it's like, time is the most precious commodity. Yeah. It's one you can't get back. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Never. I don't care, you can get money, but you can make money more, right. you can do all, right. it's a lot of things you can do, but you can never get time back. Yeah. And then you only have so much of it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you what do you do much, with it? You don't know how much that is. Correct. That's the one thing that you, you know what I'm saying, you can't capitalize on. Absolutely. So I, I get that. That's good. So that's, that's a mind frame that a lot of people, especially in our, you know, in, in our communities, don't understand until it's late, too late, right. or until they get to a certain part where they don't have much of it left, and then they want trying to use as much of it as they can. Yeah. And so it's I'm a, glad it's, to hear you say that at this age. Yeah, bro. It's, <clears> it's a poverty thing, too, to be honest. You yeah. Know, when you drive in a nicer neighborhood, they tend to drive a little slower. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They tend to take their time. I'm going to go to the grocery store. I'm going to go to the gym. Yeah. And, you know, the, the, the more poverty-stricken neighborhoods, people speeding, running around, doing this, doing that. It's I, I can't make the direct correlation, but I always, as of late, I ain't going to say always, but recently I felt like it's a correlation there between, like, why these folks with all this, you know, that are better off tend to be in, in less of a rush. You know, they stopped at the light when it's yellow. They ain't got to speed through the red. And it's like, how are you moving? You know what I'm saying? How am I moving? What does that look like? Yeah. Gotcha. Well, what we're going to do right here is we're going to take a little break, and then we're going to regather ourselves, come in, and then my co-host, Mr. Brill, is going to come in, and she's going to finish finish up with us. Let's do it, man. Uh, we we going to hit some heavy-hitting questions. Man, that's what I... 
That's why I'm bringing her in. Let's go. That's man. why she's coming in, man. You know what I'm saying? I did the fun stuff with me. Now, now she comes in with the heavy hitting. Let's go. All right, we'll take a break and we'll be right back. Cause I done learned the real from the fake And I done learned enough not to gamble with fate And they rather believe all the lies Than believe the truth that they see with their eyes Fool me once, fool me twice, never three times About to run it up like three times When they shot like two, three back in his prime Three P, three times Fool me once, fool me twice, never three times Had to run it up like three times when it shot like two, three back in his prime Three P, three times Now that I can't up I'm about to stay up Ain't no illusions here The city, Kansas City. All I know is work hard, play hard, make a change for a lay in the graveyard. I know how to hustle hard, boy. I earned this one. I was destined from the start, and I learned it from Kansas City. We were never top of the list. We. Gave him the sauce, told him class dismissed. Raised around thugs and ballers, golden parlors. You got a four door, you got room for all us. Adidas shirt, better match Adidas kicks. If we ain't perpetrating, match it up. You know that we the shit. Forget who the weakest is. Sundays, we all kings, all chiefs. Swope Park, we've been trying to kick it all week. Cause I don't see enemies no more. All I see is my kinfolk. We getting money from legends to Lee Summit. Up there in the bleachers buzzing. The world know what's something about me. The most overlooked term, most celebrated. Most talented, but still most underrated. They don't understand what it's like to come from hatred. Racism and nothing given to become the favorite. So ride from Gregory till you get to Truman. Out the parallel, keep the city booming. We making money, shit. We might start a union. Gotta pay us for all they ruined it. Kansas City. Kansas City. Kansas City. I love it. I, I, I love it. Kansas City. I love it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I love it. Kansas City. The way we going would never stop. All around the world, you know I represent the die. Kansas City, we ballin', ballin', became the call. And still with my day ones in the city, we overhauling. It's still Kansas City to the death of me. Guardian angels to Bethany knew I had to work. It's not a maybe dog, it's a definite. I'm a win, ain't no pressing me, it's a lot of hurt. All that pain made me tougher, ready to get it. Counting the struggle that influenced every decision. Taught me how to turn a giant to an ant. Put the boot on, ride with me, Kansas City, the champ. I hear a lot about Missouri versus Kansas. Who's who, how they acting, and who the man is. What if I told you I'm letting time decide? We ain't really divided, they just profiting from them lies. My parents is from both sides of the line. Mom, Sumner, a cat, dad, Central High. Blessed to be breathing, trying to create a new vibe in these times. In the place we reside, we call Kansas City. We're back from our break. We're still live here on Jenna Club TV on YouTube. Uh, our live broadcast is brought to you by uh, New Wall Street, an investment education community. This episode is brought to you by Wilson's Pizza and Grill, 1801 North, or not North, 1801 Quindaro Boulevard. We're on, we're at 719 North 6th Street here in Wyandotte County at the lovely Kinship Cafe. 
We're back with the Evening Social Podcast, and I'm joined uh, by my co-host, uh, Jabril Jeanette. How are you? I'm good. Good, That's good. Cool. And we're here with my guy, Mr. Comfortable Everywhere, yes, sir. Eshawn Henderson. All right. He's smooth. He's smooth. He's smooth. Yeah, I'll just. He's good. He's smooth guy. Yeah, one, yeah. I'm going to get back to this, E. You know what I'm saying? I got to bring this up, man, because she, she said Arbaugh. this before. You, with your you know what I'm saying? We coming, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm coming with that satchel page now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? E. So when did, when did we meet, man? How did we meet? Me we, and you. We met around, <clears throat> this is the way I remember it. It's okay. two sides of every story. Around 07. Right around that time, still wearing big, big clothes and all that, big two, three, four X T shirts. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I remember, remember the pro am was popping. Kansas City used to have a pro am, uh, mm-hmm. summer league. Man, it was so good, bro. Man, and I, like, I'm, I'm gonna tell my side of it, and then I want you to tell how you remember it. But yeah, then yeah, I want to yeah. tell you like who you were speaking into because you probably didn't realize it. Uh-huh. But that's a difference. That we gonna get there. Uh-huh. So I remember it as Stu, our homeboy, mm-hmm. Stu Wright, my dude. Stu would just saved my life. I, I believe that with my whole heart. Not dodge a bullet, but like help me put my life on the right path. Mm-hmm. Uh, Stu, somehow I guess y'all have been talking. I, that's kind of blurry to me. But he's like, hey, my homie wants you to play with me. Go play with him in the pro end. Play with him. Play with him. And I'm like, all right, whatever. You know, I'm 20, 19, something like that. I don't care. I just want to hoop. Like, I don't care. You know, that's how most of us are at that age. Let's just play. And it wasn't no big deal to me. I didn't think nothing of it. And then, like, you was at the gym one day, and you said something to me, said, what's up? And I'm just like, I really, I kind of to this day, like, I'm really in my world. I try to be, like, really conscious of how I talk to people. Now, I just know, like, I'm a big dude. You know what I'm saying? Like, people tend to pay attention to tall people. You know, I try to be really respectful of people when I see them. Back then, I, I had no idea. You know what I'm saying? I'm in my world. I don't care about you. Like, let me go do what I do. With a, lot, a lot of young people are like that. And um, so we had interacted. And I had been hooping. And Stu came to the gym. He's like, hey, Ishan, this this my guy. I was like, oh, what's up, bro? And I still, I didn't think nothing of our interaction. I just don't remember it being positive. And then uh, Stu was like, yeah, this is my dude that, you know, I want you to play with. That I don't want you to play with. I was like, all right, what's up? Let's do it. And you like, this this the right here? Oh yeah, he, he yes, bro, he yes. Like you was, was kind of excited about it, and um, I just remember like that happening, and then like it's blurry to me, bro. But that just I remember that's how we met. Let's just leave it at that. Like, how you remember? I remember it through Stu. That's how I remember. Yeah. I remember we were talking. I had come, you know, y'all was hooping, and I was coming to the hoop sessions talking. We were talking about getting the team. Stu had already been playing with me, you know. Um, and he was telling me, because I'm like, Stu, we need some, we need some younger, y- younger guns. You yeah. know what I mean? Because he's been he... old for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> My dude's been old for a minute. <laughs> Fire! <laughs> so he's like, yo, well, come to here, come here. And I came to one place, and he, did, he never showed up. But I seen you. Oh, yeah. Pin mm-hmm. out. But, right. But I and, and I just came up to you like, yo, what's up, man? You know, cause I was trying to meet you, but you was in your own little not I, I knew it, plus you didn't know me, I ain't know you. Right. I'm just, what's up, you? And you was just like, yo, what's up, man, move? And just kept moving, kept it moving. Right. I'm like, yo, I, I know Stu know who this is. You right. know what I'm saying? So I asked a few other people I know, they're like, man, what's Stu's name? Right. You know what I'm saying? Who is Stu? You know what they yeah. tell me. So I hear Stu, like, yo, I know who I, I know who he want. He like, who? I'm like, man, you know this cat named Eshan. I'm yeah. like, I don't know his last name. He just kept saying Eshan. He's like, yeah, Eshan. He's he good. I'm like, yeah. Tom, like, he's like, yeah. I said, yeah, yeah, man, we want him. Right. I was like, no, nah. he's like, yeah. That's how and then when I came to the gym next time with E, yeah. uh, I mean, with Stu, he's like, yo, E right over there. Boom. I'm like, cool. Like, man, introduce me to him. So, you know, that's how I, that's how I remember. What, you know what I mean? I mean, it's kind of, yeah, it's kind of, <laughs> yeah. Look, one thing I always feel like kind of embarrassed of my past self. It's weird. And I think why is because, like, man, I really have a growth mentality. Like, I want to grow. I want to get better. I see, like, my flaws, like, very vividly. Like, to this day, like, it's like, man, I don't like that about myself. Like, can I work on that? How can I get better? And, like, so when I came up, like, I wasn't a, a big deal. You know what I'm saying? Like, I wasn't a big deal. I wasn't a, a player that was, you know, I didn't, wasn't even the best player on my high school team. Probably the most talented, but not the best player by far. I just had a small view of myself. So 
So I think I carry myself as somebody who had like a small view. In my circle, with my friends, oh no, we about to get it in, we gonna battle. But outside of that that, that comfort zone, I'm just kind of like, let me not make a mistake. That's how I felt. I didn't really understand the basketball world. So I think a lot of times people spoke into me from their perspective of this person, and I'm like, I'm just limited. But you let me go to you know Hillcrest Community Center with my own boys, like, we gonna do whatever. I'm more yeah. free at that point, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's something that like, I don't know, that's why I feel like it, it that that era almost needed a disclaimer. Cause like I didn't I didn't know what I was. I didn't I wasn't aware of myself like I am now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so you know, do you remember one of the first conversations we had in the game? Vaguely. Huh? Yeah, vaguely. Oh, okay. Yeah. One of the first thing is I'm like, I asked you. I, I remember this to myself, I asked you. I said, yo, so are you going to get aggressive or what? <laughs> like, bro, I, I got you over here to, to score. Right. And you looked at me in my face like, what? Right. And you're looking at the other people on the team like, I'm like, man, I brought you here to but, score. I watched you. But I've been watching but, but you. Now, but now do you, like, I didn't even know you. I don't, I don't remember that. Yeah, yeah, I remember yeah. it was something like somewhat of a, I wouldn't say a clash, but like. I was just had a, but, I, I feel it was but, a. But think about it. Like, you speaking to me and to your belief of, like, let's just say level nine. Uh -huh. But I see myself, I'm level three. Like, why are you? What are you talking about? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because I didn't, I didn't grow up in that. I mean, I kept growing after high school. I was like yeah, six, yeah, five yeah. when I graduated high school. Uh -huh. So you got this person with all this potential. And I'm like, I didn't see it. I was just like, man, I'm just me. What you talking about? And that's exactly how you you, you was talking about. Right. It was like, so, man, I'm throwing playing. And then I'm like, no, you're not. Right. You just helped him. Yeah. Like, bro, I brought you yeah. here to school. Shoot right. the ball. Right. You ain't going to shoot the ball to Right. And that's where, and I don't say we had no class. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna just say we had differences of where I thought you yeah. could be and should be and how you wanted to be. You know what I'm saying? But I do believe, yeah. I do believe yeah. that later on you realized yeah. that, yo, you know what? I am that man. Yo, I, I can do that. I don't feel like I ever had <clears throat> like this supreme confidence. And when I look at players that play at the highest level, like, yeah, they when just, you played against us, man, you was trying to kill us, man. Come on now. But that's in pockets, you know. Like, <laughs> I, I, for me, like, when I think about, like. You lost your breath? No, you back no, and forth like basketball? I'm keeping like, up. What? Well, no, because, I mean, I, I feel like you need to give yourself some grace. I, I think that most youth, if not all, are, are just unaware yeah. of themselves and, and their capabilities. You know, but, it, it takes a level of exposure. But, to, but you know what Mo represents? that like I'm going to be this for my kids to this day like I'm already that and my son is my oldest son is three months you know mm -hmm. Mo has just got this rawness to him that I think all like black young men need I'm going to tell you what it is that's that dot babe <laughs> I, I, I tell you <laughs> that's this. what that is <laughs> I tell you this when I was 25 so not too long I was already pro mm -hmm. I met this guy who I look at like my big bro my mentor he joke all the time like, man that's my son right and he, he's always been like very, very raw, but brutally honest. And I enjoy that. I, I think that's one of the best things. But like when it really come down to it, man, that dude will go toe to toe with you. I'm 6'8", I'm 255. They don't care. You know what I'm saying? Like he, to this day, like, and I know you got that same spirit. So I be, we was talking one day and we had these deep conversations. He's my barber. He was the pastor, one of the pastors of my old church. That they just helped me grow up a lot, man. I owe a lot of who I am to those people. And I, I can never repay them for that time of who, who just seeing me, you know what I'm saying? Being around me and real men is about something. And um, you represent that. That's why I'm here. Same type of energy. And I think, you know, from your perspective, you, you know, five, six, seven, eight years older than me, you're like, man, you got all this, bro. You can be X and Y and Z, but you just, you just seeing that. But you're not seeing, and my, I told my college coach the same thing, like, you're not seeing the obstacles I had to overcome. There's no way you can see that. There's mm -hmm. no way you can see this low view that I have of myself, this low expectation that I have for myself, just not understanding certain things. So to this day, like I tell my son, like, I mean, don't get in my face in the morning. He's three years old until you brush your teeth. Like, yeah. you're going to get a dose of brutal honesty. You yeah. see him a little embarrassed yeah. already. But no, you need to understand reality. You need yeah. to understand this is real. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Your mama for that. She can do that. That's cool. Mm -hmm. 
I, I, I firmly believe with my whole heart that if I would have been introduced to that level of manhood at 9, 10 years old, bro, I'd have, I'd have played the NBA. And everything yeah. that I wanted to do, that I want to do now for my family and eventually for the community would have been exponentially faster and reached that many more people and had that much more impact because I would have been able to reach a certain level much, much younger. So that's why I'm here. Because at the end of the day, like somebody else needs to hear that. And it might be basketball, it might not, but that for, for I know that just interacting with people like Stu and then you and then, you know, other people along the way. And then, you know, my big homie that I just referenced, it's, it's a hard shit. And when I look at men that I came up around, they didn't have that, you know, and I see the difference. Whereas we started here, and, you know, now it's, it's night and day because these little lessons over and over and over and over. So I think you make a good point. Like we shouldn't apologize for who we were because we was kids, we young, we don't, we don't know. But I do feel like for you, especially when I hear you talk about me now, it's important to put context to who you was dealing with. Because I just, you know, like what nobody forcing me to do that. I just like playing. I didn't think about this this grand scheme like that. I didn't understand like the level of work that you needed to put in, the presence that you needed to have. Honestly, the man that you need to become to achieve certain things in life, but you know, better late than never at the same time. Yeah, that's a yeah. testament to playing. No, I mean, I, I understand where you're coming from. I, I think the, the five to seven years um, that you had on him, uh, because he had been where you were, mm -hmm were at one point is why he was able to see that like man like you're so much greater than even I was when I was at, at your point so now you know it's just our responsibility to to make sure that we we teach the next generation a little bit sooner than we did I mean because I feel the same way and, and even with my own son um he's 14 play ball you know and, and I, I I be going hard I, I you know, I'm like coach, man. I, I go hard. I go hard on, the, on you know, on him and in the paint. Um, but because I see so much potential in him that I don't think that he sees in himself yet. He's not completely confident. And I try to always tell him, my like, son, once you for real just own who you are and and be confident, like, like nobody not gonna be able to mess with you, you know. But it's only so much I can speak into yeah. him before he grows into that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like you know what you know when you know it. Yeah. It's only so much you can do. Now nah, you're 100% right, and I think, like, for me, uh, I, I got a cousin who uh, our, mom, our moms are sisters, and she lives in Lincoln, Nebraska. Her husband is assistant coach on the women's team at the University of Nebraska. They son, over the pandemic, grew from, like, 5'9", five, 5'10", five, to 6'6". Six, six. Same type of growth that I had. So his dad is a Division One basketball coach. They got resources. You know, he's from, he got more opportunity. And uh, he, it's a good possibility that he'll be around in the summertime playing locally down here. And I, I mean, naturally, I, I want him to stay with me while he's there. You know, I want him to, hey, come, let's go work out. Like, this is how you do this. This is how you do that. The same thing. So, man, like, it, it, it don't go unnoticed and it don't go untouched. And mm -hmm. for him, you know, I know that's my son's favorite cousin. He's 15, my son three. You owe down. You know what I'm saying? Not, yeah, yeah. You owe down. You need to get as far as you can. Yeah. And I want you telling him that same yeah. stuff. I want right. you pushing him around, pushing right. him in his ribs if he got to. Yeah. All that. But <laughs> it, it just don't stop. And I think that it's a lot more context to make that those lessons a lot more robust. But yeah. it, it don't go unnoticed. You know what I mean? But, again, that's why I'm here. Because yeah. I, I just know you represent that. I know you do. E, I think you said something else too, man, that I, I've always heard. And I, I've said this to Stu and a couple of people, like, people don't realize that coaches learn too. You know what I mean? You know, I've learned so much from different players, you know what I mean, of how the coach learn. And you're right, I didn't know. Right. I didn't know where you come from. We just had come, we finished the program, we put them, I'm telling Stu, you know, this where we're going. So I didn't know right. what was, you know, where you had come from. I didn't know that. I seen you at this level. Right. Like you're here. When you're in this gym with these people, mm -hmm. then this is the level that right. we just everybody's like, oh, he's at this, this is where he wants this this. So that's how you know it's you just see potential. If you see and I see and that's young, that's what it was. I see yeah. man at, but I, it, it was more than that. I not just the athleticism right. or nothing. I seen a person that was here because they wanted to and they loved it. 
Yeah. That's what I see. Yeah. There's other people here that's here for something else. They're here because they've been told that they this good and they great and they told all this and so they hear from that. But you was there because you wanted to be yeah. there and you truly loved it and it showed in how you played, it showed in how you, what you did. That's what the, the key is, I think, and that's what I latched on to. But I also think that's the reason why you went as far as you did and not having some of the, what you'd say, yeah, those other sense. pushes and things yeah. that early. No, it's been a blessing. And I, I'm, you know, coming from where I came from, I never started a game in high school or college. You know, I made a lot of money, nine years playing professional basketball. I like, you know, man, I'm that's gonna, something I wanted to talk about. That's one of the questions I yeah. want to talk to you about is, yeah. man, how did you continue to go? Because I know that's the thing. In high school, college, you weren't the guy. quoted the yeah. man, you yeah. know, on your team. But you you succeeded and, and continued to play and go through, and then you did go overseas and make good money. So I say this, how bro. Did you do that? I say that like one thing. I think that if I was if I was an expert in something, it would be transition. You know, mm -hmm. on the court too. You know, yeah. I was a good transition player. Yeah, I'm gonna get four to six points on the court. So very literally, but it's transition. And like for me, I made two very big transitions in my life, and I, I think that I could I could write a dissertation on how to transition from one thing to the next. Mm -hmm. It's ironic to me, man, when I was a kid playing basketball in the, garage, in, the, in the driveway before my parents got divorced, I always wanted to be a basketball, a pro athlete, which I didn't know nobody that was that. And I wanted to be a real estate dude. And I became, by the grace of God, both of those things. But like from college, from high school, that was one transition. So it was a part of the first transition. Oh, now you, you're not good enough to play in college. You're not this, you're not that. To me, it's like, you know, Lock in on your goal of what you want. Like, did not know this is what I want. Can't nobody tell me no different. One thing I've always been able to do is, no, this is what I want. Right here, this is what I want. You ain't never got to worry about that. I'm going to tell you what I want. And I'm going to tell my, even if I keep it to myself, this is what I want. So from high school, it's like, you know what? I don't know what my homies is doing, but like, I think this is for me. Like, I'm going for this. Go, go, where, where, where the camp at? Somebody just need to see me. I know I got game. Yeah, I don't got stats, all that stuff. That's the past. Like, I'm going towards this. The exact same thing happened in college. I'm like, yeah, me and my coach didn't see eye to eye. Like, I had a good run. I had some good stuff. Man, I locked in on what I wanted. Now, it wasn't as easy as a transition. In high school, when you six, six, five, six, six, athletic, you know, thin, you got the frame, it's easy to go to a junior college. Anybody will take you, you know? Like, anybody will take you. But from college it, it, to pro, it, it was a much harder transition. But my, my next transition was even harder than that. So I say that from from high school to from college to pro, or I'm sorry, from my bad, from yeah, from high school to college, I did that once. And then from college, it was a similar situation. Like my stats weren't great. I think a lot of people saw the the potential, but it just wasn't. It wasn't a. a, a it didn't click. Same thing exists though. I'm six eight. Put on paper six nine. I'm athletic, just get me in front of some people. Like, I don't care, like, get me in front. I know that I have what they're looking for. It's gonna be an opportunity somewhere. I'm talking about the day after my season was over, I'm emailing coaches overseas. It's March of 2009 or whatever year it was. I'm emailing coaches. They don't know me. They, that's not even how you do it, but I'm going, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm about to take a bunch of steps and figure it out as we go. So the transition is lock in on what you want, network with the people who, who, who are doing it. You know, mm -hmm. I called Cortez the minute I got, the minute school was over. Got a cousin, I called him the minute high school or college career was over. What do I need to do? What do I need to do? Where do I need to go? Where do I need to go? And I'm, I'm, let me find the people who are doing it and connect to them. And for me, my, my most proud transition, the thing that I'm most proud of as far as professionally in my life was, you know, I left basketball on my own terms. I don't got no regrets. You know, I don't touch basketball for six months, I'm okay with that because I left on my terms. I created this career through my own effort, obviously through the grace of God. But I, I went out there, I hustled it up, I made it happen even though I wasn't this big name person. But I left on my own terms. And I know with, with ball players, because all my friends are ball players, that haunts them that they didn't, they, what, what if, what if? I got the, the best job offer of my life. And I said, no, nah, I think I'm gonna do real estate. My wife was pregnant. Um, you know what I'm saying? We had some money, we was all right, but it wasn't tired for the rest of your life money, you know, we, we got to figure it out quick, you know what I'm saying, it was that type of thing, 
But it's the same exact thing. Like, who, who doing real estate the capacity that I want? Let me find these people. This is what I want to do. I'm going to read every book. I'm listening to every podcast. Dude, you can have a conversation or listen in on a conversation with multi-millionaires. Just listen to podcasts. You know what I mean? Like, Drake yeah. album drop, but that ain't going to make me no bread. So let me let me find out you know, what that is. Having extremely uncomfortable conversations with people with a way higher level than me, but these people have become my mentors. They've become my colleagues at this point because, you know, they they just respect that resiliency and that that that, that ability to say, you know what, I want this. This is what I'm going after. So, my my most proud transition is going from pro to, uh, you know, a real estate professional and, and creating a business that has created a lifestyle for me that's, you know. It's, it's what I envisioned as a kid, and I think we just really scratching the surface. Yeah, yeah. comfortable everywhere. That's Facts. why that, that, that title was there because Facts. I know I like that you've made, you you made transitions, but you've yeah. been comfortable. I also yeah. say that because, now i got to ask you this too. Yeah. From where you're from, from the influences that surround you, <clears throat> so how did you not, how did you choose to stay focused on basketball and this, and you ain't get caught up in Selling drugs, dope game, the hustle and that. Thing. I mean, how's that? Man, I think I, I think I knew what was what was for me and what wasn't. Man, I think I just stayed true to myself. I got some homeboys, you know them. You yeah. know some of them. They, you know, they went down that road and they they dabbled. That ain't me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. And um, I had a scare. Uh, fresh out of high school, I went to college and I got kicked out. And I was just hanging out with cousins, brothers, just hanging mm-hmm. out, I'm not doing nothing illegal. I even had a job. But I'm not doing anything. I'm not working toward anything. I'm just existing, to be honest. 6'8", 190 pounds, just hanging out, which is crazy when you think about it. Nobody in my family, in my immediate circle is saying, hey, bro, you need to go who? You need to go figure your life out. Right. This ain't for you. I got a friend, one of my best friends, named Lance West. <clears throat> he, was, he was telling me, yo, bro, you need to be who? We just graduated high school the same year. He playing ball at a, <clears throat> excuse me, NAI school. Need to be hooped. Need to be hooped. He's the most positive influence in my life. Everybody around me was selling something or doing something crazy at the time. With nobody working on nine to five. Everybody just doing stuff. But these are my friends. Like I don't see the negative. I see nah, that's my homie. We just laugh. We kick it. Yeah. I ain't. I wasn't even drinking at the time. I wasn't smoking none of that. I was just. Those are my friends. I don't see the bad that they do. I just see my friend. So I could have, you know, definitely went down that road, but. Lance, my positive homie, had came home from college and it was the year 2004, the year after I graduated high school. And he said, yo, I met this guy, Lance always network. To this day, that's what he do. Shout out Lance. He said, <clears throat> I got this guy who's recording AAU games and putting them on the internet. I'm like, that's stupid. Ain't nobody gonna watch that. <laughs> that's what I said. Yeah. But he like, hey, you can travel with us from Oklahoma to Texas to Vegas to LA. And, you know, like, they gonna pay you to go. All right, let's do it. We did all that traveling in a minivan with a bunch of cameras, recording AAU games, bro. Recording AAU games. So we get to LA, and we recording at Loyola Marymount University, bro. Loyola Marymount University. Mm -hmm. Women, I'm like, oh man, like I didn't go to college. I'm 19 years old. Like, I, I gotta get in college. Yeah. This is college? Yeah. yeah. That's the beach? I yeah. gotta get in college. Like, yeah. I, I kind of was already thinking that, but I didn't really say it out loud. Yeah. So, we filming these AAU games, you know, these kids watching them. My camera skills was trash. I'm watching the game, <laughs> whatever. And then, like, at halftime or between games, I'm out there playing around, hooping. I think some of the Loyola players was out there, whatever. But I'm hooping, I'm shooting, shot, hit it. The dude who came out, who was boss or whatever, come on, like, hey, man, what you doing? Like, hey, man, chill, man. I'm about to go back up here and record. No, 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 no. What are you doing? It's like, hey, bro, I said I'm about to go record. What's, what's, what's your problem? Nah, man, you need to be in college. What? <laughs> what are you talking about? Nah, you coming with me. Lance was mad because he had to film. I'm still getting paid. He about to take me. I'm like, I don't know where we're going. Let's roll. We go to East L.A. Junior College. Like, you about to try out for this team. Like, All right. I'm out there balling, mo. I'm killing. You know what I'm balling, mo. <laughs> I'm killing. I'm killing. The coach come over. He's a Mexican dude. The whole team was Mexican. I've never seen that in my life. Whole team, bro. The whole team. He coach come up to me after the coach. Like, yeah, I, I think 
can offer you a scholarship. I'm like, this dude don't even know my last name. Like, <laughs> but, but that I think that gave me yes, some of that, that confidence yeah. of like, man, if I get in front of people, it's a different story. Yeah. But he, he, you know, Sean was like, no, 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 we're going to let you know. He grabbed me, you know, so I'm like, nah, we're going to do better than this. That next week I come home, my, my brother and my cousin had, had committed a crime and it didn't play out super fast. But they ended up getting locked up. I'm with them every day, bro. Every day. My cousin go 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 get locked up for a life. He's still gone from mm-hmm. 04. He's still gone. My brother did a few years. I'm looking like, that ain't for me. I'm thinking about Loyola Marymount. Yeah. You know, the females. Yeah. I'm thinking about the love I got. I'm on the court. I'm like, man. And then, you know, I had homies coming home from college. I'm like, man, I'm serving these dudes. I'm like, why am I nice like that? I'm better, yeah. y'all. But it's all, like, so, like, Hyper local, you like I said, everything I think like very small, like within my circle. But like long story short, coaches start calling me like University of Memphis. Like he had all these relationships with all these coaches because he was starting this recruiting company. The stupid idea of putting people on it. <laughs> I said that's it. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> Show how much I know. But people start calling me. They start calling me, and I didn't have the grades. I ended up. Uh, signing to Coach Flax and Brown Mackey Junior mm-hmm. College the year after they won a, a national championship. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I've always been a man of principle. So I get down there, me, my mom, and my girlfriend at the time, we drove down there. I look around, call Coach, like, hey, where you at, man? That's what I said to him. I'm a cocky dude. He's like, oh, yeah, I'm on, uh, doing something. He was gone, golf and charity tournament or something. I'm like, man, you ain't here. They talking about I got to take out some loan. He's like, yeah, man, you got to take out a loan because it's not. Technically, a full scholarship. I'm like, I'm leaving. I left in August. In <laughs> August, like I didn't have a school. I'm, like, I'm leaving. I'm just stupid, bro. I just like, man, I'm out. I ain't mess with this dude. So, me and my mama ended up scrambling through the phone book. All these coaches have been reaching out to me, trying to get me, trying to get me, trying to get me. I end up at this small, obscure JUCO up in Trenton, Missouri, North Central Missouri College. Um, made some of the best friends, some of my best friends ever. To this day, I still talk to my point guard is now the head coach there, who's probably going to end up coaching my little cousin that I just mentioned a second ago. Mm-hmm. So it's funny how it all come back full circle, but I just, hey, we're going to figure it out. You know what I'm saying? We're going to yeah. figure it out. So shout out to moms for that. I'll never yeah. forget that. But that, she was really adamant about, it. you need to do something. When I finally got on board, I'm stubborn, so she wouldn't fight me. But when I finally got on board, she was phone book. Or Google, you know, like yeah, yeah. we we gonna figure out figure it out. So that's 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 how I got back into it. Okay. That's that's how I stayed away from that because it was if I don't go to LA that so time. So you got something like a Jay Z story. So, Jay Z like talked that. about you yeah. know had he not went on that yeah. tour, yeah. you know what I mean? His his partners yeah. got committed and got locked up. So you go yeah. to <laughs> my man said. <laughs> My video skills was trash. trash. <laughs> That's okay. Mine is too. That's why Theo don't let me touch the camera. <laughs> yeah, he don't let me touch it. Man, I, but I love that, man. I, I, I love that you, that you've seen it. And then I love, this This why I really love it. I, I like our audience to understand it, that you have principle to understand that ain't for me. Right. You know, sometimes people just, even though they, they hang and they ride, they just follow on with everything. Right. You know what I mean? Any and everything. Yeah. But you have principles say, yo, that ain't for me. You know, this and that. So I like that. I like them to be able to hear that. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? What kind of peer pressure was you experiencing with that? Because everybody was off doing their own thing. You were saying it was for you. I mean. Uh, not not a lot, for real. Um, I think, man, my homies, they, they did a decent job of like, man, I'm over here. You know, I think if I'd have knocked on that door, they they, they may have been open to it. I, I will never know. I mean, I guess they could tell you, but it was never no pressure to go and do something because I think to us, we just looked at it like, yo, we homies, we hanging out. If some some street thing got involved in any way, like that's over there, and do it. You know what I'm saying? Like I've seen them do stuff. I know things that they've done, but that's just not my world. And it's it's similar to like, you know, if, if you know. A, real estate deal pop up right now and I got to go outside like y'all see that but that don't necessarily deter y'all from you my friend we friends we people you know ain't no big deal he outside handling business that's exactly how I look at it that's they handling doing me I didn't understand like how that world can easily come crash into your world just just being a kid just being silly 
Yeah. 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 Right now, I got to take the opportunity. We got a few more minutes, 10 minutes or so before we get out of here. Yeah. But I take the opportunity to tell my people, man, do not forget about our brother's podcast, The Gentleman's Talk. It's brought to you by none other than Don Paul, Mr. Official um, himself, and he is the uh, the organizer or the owner of the Gentleman's Collective. Uh, so make sure you check that out, Gentleman's Talk. All right? <clears throat> now, before we finish, I got to ask a couple more, man. I got to throw a few more. Now I got to throw that Dan Quisenberry. Yeah, come on. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But let's talk a little bit about business. I, I want to get just a little bit of this scene I want to talk about because now you're in the business uh, of, um, uh, of real estate. Yeah. Um, and let's see if I can say this correctly and go back in my notes. I know it was Rise um, Home Buyers, yeah. correct? Yeah. Okay, Rise Home Buyers. So let's talk about the transition of that. And one thing I want to specifically talk about um, is I want to talk about moving into that and then I want to talk about that hustle mentality, you know what I'm saying, and yeah. business and, yeah. and doing Because that's something we talked about before. I'm sure. like, man, let's get to that because, yeah. you know, I know I like myself, right. you know what I'm saying, and others, a lot of times we want to do positive things and we're doing it. But we do it with, you know, a, a certain hustle, mm -hmm. you know, that, that's not really a business mind. Yeah. You know what I mean? mm -hmm. So yeah. that's, that's a little bit. So real estate, you said you always wanted to do that. Why? Why is that something uh, you wanted I, to do? My dad was a contractor, and I watched him. You know, he worked with street guys. You mm -hmm. know, they bought some house somewhere. Uh, one guy in particular, he owned a bunch of houses, like, in, in the 50s, right off 70 Highway, mm -hmm. uh, 71 Highway in Missouri, obviously. And I just remember like the freedom. These dudes would be fly. They had a music blast and they had their cars. But I just remember the freedom of movement, you know? Mm -hmm. And like that was very attractive to me when I was a kid. Like, they ain't gotta sit in one spot and work. Like they move around. They so I think I was attracted to like the street guys for just again, they style, they 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 they, they presence, they 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 always came off as tough but clean, you know, and but the freedom of movement, you might be over here, let me run over here, check on this real quick. So, you know, my dad always fixed the houses, but I always looked at it different. Like, I want to I wanna be clean and I want to own the houses. But I didn't know how, I didn't know what that meant. I never saw nobody or nothing like that. I just, that's just, I guess, I, I mean, I did, but I didn't. Not right. up close and personal. So, mm -hmm. that's where that came from. Okay. What type of real estate is it that you do? Oh, uh, I flip and buy rentals. Flip? Yeah. Wholesale any? I do some wholesaling. We yep. market all our contracts directly. Well, we find all our contracts ourselves. Yeah. So we market our own deals with the client. That's dope. So yeah. So yeah. So over the last three and a half years, done about 125 real estate transactions. Yeah. And my goal is to hold 100 properties over the next three years, just buy 100 houses and mm -hmm. just hold them and transition to another phase of real estate. That's my goal. Which yeah. is. Well, my goal is that to, that's my retirement. Just like rental properties. Yeah, just hold rental like properties, buy them, fix them up, keep 30% yep. equity minimum. Mm -hmm. uh, and if over the course of your portfolio, if you got 30% equity in every house, you know, you can do on average, that's going to be minimum of $30,000 of equity, not yeah. real cash. But if you do 30000 times 100, like that would be the equity in my portfolio that would equal my net worth, obviously, mm -hmm. minus whatever debts I own. But, um, that's my goal, and I've seen. I know guys that have done it. That's actually not that big of a goal, but I want to do that to create a level of freedom for myself to be free to move again and just kind of live a certain type of lifestyle. Not even to um, jump off topic. Sorry, y'all invited me here. <laughs> but um, the the um, freedom that you talked about when you were talking about your your father earlier, and we we got on it at, uh, on the topic of like how how we how you feel like it's always moving faster in, in the areas of impoverished areas and yeah. things of that nature yeah. but i feel like part of that is because of a lack of freedom yeah for sure it's like, a lack of freedom like money money gives you freedom you yeah. know what i'm saying and, and you're more relaxed when you ain't on somebody else's time and on somebody else's dime you know what i'm saying yeah. like that's exactly what it is yeah that's 100%. true i agree 100 percent. that's true Couldn't i think that's the difference in the and what we talk about the being um you know what i'm saying an owner versus a renter Yep. You know what I'm saying? Being a producer instead of a consumer. We talk yep. about those things because it's a different in mind frame. Also, the mind frame, not just different, but it's how you move. Yeah. You yep. know what I mean? It's always racing, always going. So my cousin tell me, you know what I'm saying, a lot of times, you know, um, this, this one thing he said, and I, and I love it. I love him for it because he teaches this mentality that he's teaching. Yeah. Um, but he used to always say, man, look, you know, hey, 
I, I don't have to ask nobody, yeah. you know, for vacation. Right. I just rearrange things. Right. Yeah. You see know what I'm saying? It's the mentality because that's how we move. It ain't like he's moving too fast or nothing. He's moving at his own pace. You know what I'm saying? Because he owns his own business. Yeah. He's owning his properties. He's moving his pace. But it's like he ain't got to, oh, I'm on a day off. I got to go try to see, can I get a day off? Can yeah. I take it fast enough? Can I? Yeah. Nah, I just need to arrange some things. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I can go. So it, it's a difference, you right, with with uh, first finances, with money. But then yeah. also having the mentality that you have with being a owner. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's, to me, like, it, it's levels of freedom. You know, like, yeah. to me, you know, I, I think I've achieved that level of freedom where I can just, what day? Like, I can make that happen for the most part. You mm -hmm. know, my kids and my family, I try to put them first. Right. I try to be home and put my kids to sleep, and 99% of the time I'm there. It's rare that I'm not at home and at least see my wife put them in the head, oh, at least. But, um, yeah, I think it's that level of freedom where I can kick it with them in the day if I want to. Uh, I think I've achieved that, and I'm, I'm grateful for that. Um, now I want to create a machine, a business that, that works and, and spits out income and revenue and pays me whether I show up Passive. or not. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's what I'm after, a business that operates and runs completely without me. And that's what I mean when I say, you know, not the hustle. Like, you hustle to a certain point, but you got to create something that is going to hustle for you, to be honest. So it's a totally different mentality. It's extremely difficult, but um, that's my goal for this year and, and going forward. I like that, knock the hustle. Yeah, no, yeah. No. yeah. I get it, knock, yeah. knock the hustle. Not having to continue to hustle, but having to hustle for you. Yeah, yeah, and, and I think that's relating back to that same point. And you go to you know, certain points in Scottsdale, Arizona, you know, Glendale, you know, mm -hmm. or uh, yeah. Henderson, Nevada. Yeah. You know, it's, these are, you know, a lot of those areas are just better off. You know, people, they take their time. It's top down, let's roll. We ain't in no rush. And I find myself even now, you know, I was joking. I knocked the mirror off my truck, speeding out the back, out the garage, because what am I rushing for? You know, mm -hmm. why? Like, whatever's going to be there, it can't go till I go. So It take a minute to, to shift yeah, the yeah. mindset, though. Like, yeah, sure. like when you, you talking about time and time, bro. Yeah. You know, with that, yeah. With that old, yeah, with that old look, huh. you know what I'm saying? He hit me with it. You didn't see it. See, he don't hit you with it, bro. He hit me with it. He waited till you was talking and turned your head and hit me with it. See, that's how he do me. I just so got here. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, finish your thought. I'm sorry. No, I was like, man, Theo didn't mess me up, man. That's how it's going to be told. See, it's just, that's, that's what the time brands just do that, man. They told okay. we have a vibe, be vibing, yeah. and he'll steal the time, man. Time is everything, though. He's willing for you. It is. It's all good. Yeah. I appreciate, you know, loving the death, man, because he keep us on, on point. Got to, you know what I'm saying? Do it. So I got to get two more questions. Is, we, we're pushing right now. I told you I'd get you out of here, too. And then you just hit me with you getting home, get your son, get kids in the bed. I'm good. I'm okay. Sleep. I'm good. All right. So I, I'm, I'm gonna give it two more, and then Jabril, I'm gonna make sure you get an opportunity if you got anything else you wanna ask too. But one of my questions I, I wanna ask before I get to the next one uh, is, <clears throat> and you answered a little bit about it, but talk about, um, as people talk about, like today we did some things and, and, and in our after school program, we are asking the kids and, and one of the things, what do you wanna be? You know what I'm saying, what's one thing you wanna do? And a lot of times, a lot of the kids said, yo, I want to be, I want to own, and I love this, because when it first started, only thing we heard was YouTuber and gamer. Right. That's it. Right. Now, we've had kids moving, and they're talking about, I want to be a owner, I want to be an engineer, I want to be a lawyer, uh, I want to be, you know, that we've got a multitude of different things that they're talking about. Right. And I, I have uh, probably about seven of them say they want to be business owners. Right. My kids so, didn't say that today. They well, didn't go say ahead. They didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> My kids didn't say that today, but that's what they were talking about over there. So the one thing I want to talk about, because it came up in the conversation, actually, um, I had an opportunity today to talk uh, with uh, our district attorney, Mark Dupree, and right. one of the things that uh, he was talking about is in his private sector business, the difference in, you, you know, them uh, working for the DA was in the private sector, you know, even though it was having his name on the wall and working, there's a whole other part of running your own business that people don't understand. Mm -hmm. yep. And especially if you have employees yep. and it's a whole different part. So can you talk just a little bit about, you know, uh, what it takes to, to own your own business? I say like leaders eat last. That's a concept that I'm still grasping. And yeah. um, I've had employees, I've had, you know, a few employees before I kind of scaled down as many employees now, but um, it, it, you really work for them. 
to be honest. You work for your employees. It, it, you, a lot of times you feel like, oh, I'm the boss on this, on that. And, and there's truth to that. But I think when you get the stories of people mistreating their workers or, you know, things not going a certain way, it's because I think the owner, the manager may have lost sight of the fact that it's your job to serve them. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's what I would say about that. And what does that look like? You know, um, the, 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 the issues that nobody talks about to me are taxes, are, you know, um, the things that don't go right. You know, I've had houses where I got to bring money to the closing table. Like I got yeah. I got to sell to sell my house. I need to pay money. It's like one of the most heartbreaking things ever, bro. It's like, God, I'm giving you money to take this. That's crazy. But, you know, not every deal is going to be perfect. So, um, just that that's all that comes to mind right now. Um, but, you know, just 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 taking on things that that, that aren't as, as, as glitter, glittery or glitzy or, or as fun, those things, you know, and that's, that's it's it. It's that iceberg, yeah. that late nights, because let me tell you, I know from wholesaling that getting your own contract is hard. Yeah. It's hard. It's a lot of time. Yeah. It's like a lot of time, and that's, that's a whole lot of no's. That's a whole lot of hanging up in your face. That's a whole lot of wrong numbers, yeah, man. Sure. So, I mean, the endurance and the persistence is... Yeah. Yeah, it's it's yeah, a so lot, and I, I learned how to kind of filter those out. So so I'm focusing my time on higher level things. But yeah, you know, like most owners have sacrificed a tremendous amount to get where they are. You know, not everybody, but most of them. And I think that the people that can withstand the storms when things don't go a certain way, like that, is the people the difference between the people who make it and the people who don't. You know, the people yeah. who get to a level and the people who don't. So um, yeah, I hope that answers your question. Oh, that's, yeah. He, you know, a lot of times when we, we, we schedule these uh, interviews and I give them the time and they say, man, you know, 6, okay, you say 6 or 6.30 and you be to none. They're like, man, what we going to do is time. But we look at it, we hear and we didn't talk to them before we know it is over. Right. And yeah. we still got two more hours worth of conversation yeah. that we could do. Yeah. So but I appreciate you coming, man. I really do. Yeah, I appreciate anyhow. your time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'd love to do this again. You know what I'm saying? Down yeah, the road. Because we got several things we didn't touch on. We do a part I mean? two. I definitely. Oh, okay, good. Two. You already put it out there. I was just about to ask. I'd love to do a part two. Yeah. All right, yeah. we we'll get that. We but, um this is this is natural to me. <clears throat> this is really, really natural. And I think that um to me the basketball is great, but I think when I think about my story, like that's the king to get them in the door to get the yeah. actual mm-hmm. substance. You know, Correct. basketball is amazing, I love it. It's still, you know, you know, it's the game. But I think the real thing, not everybody's gonna be able to play that game at a high level. It's one percent of people on earth that get paid to play a sport. And I'm grateful to so have had that opportunity, but everybody can own a piece of property. And mm-hmm. owning a piece of property in the next two years is vital for people who look like us. That's extremely yeah. important. Mm-hmm. And I love to come back and talk about why that's so important. Man, come you, on with the final It's there. Music. It's all there. We're going to come back. We're going to bring you part of that. And we're going to definitely let that, that piece of financial literacy come out. Yeah, I mean, man, appreciate y'all, man. It's there. No, now, I got to ask you this. This question to end, I, I end with this question every time. So we're um, at the Super Bowl that just passed, uh, and you get a, uh, they call you a ticket, and what you want is a Super Bowl uh, halftime uh, commercial. Can't sell it. Um, you're on your way down uh, there. All you have is the time from your seat to the time you get down, and you got a good seat, you right behind, you know what I'm saying, um, right, right behind the 50-yard line. So they got you coming back down. So what do you feel that commercial with? You got to look in this camera over here and tell me. Yeah, this is your commercial. Actually yeah. tell us, you know what I'm saying, what you so put what on the commercial. Thing this is on you. It's your commercial. Right. I can't tell you commercial. So I mean, for me, that's that's not that hard. Like, I, 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 would, I would take uh, a lot of our really prominent entertainers that are really more so business owners than, than entertainers now. So like, Now, look, don't tell me what you would do. Look in the camera and do the commercial. Because you're down there now. You, but they got you on the field. I wouldn't be in the commercial. You have to be in the commercial yeah. because they just called you down and said, hey, come on down. Esha Henderson, you, you won got it. your ticket. Come on down. You're coming down to the 50-yard so line. To, and now to, you're doing the commercial. So it's just me speech. by myself? You coming on down to the commercial. That's, that's tough. It's like an elevator speech. You it's got you that? Oh, so right now there. I get it. I misunderstood. My bad. 
So you saying like it's me and I have to sell myself. Correct. You they okay. just called you. You yeah. got you got the ticket. They like your ticket. He signed a ticket to, oh that's me. Yeah, we're gonna give you a sixty second commercial on this halftime. That ain't Come that hard. Down. That ain't that hard. So I just say book me. Book me uh, for your uh, speaking engagement so I can speak to your kids and talk to them about how to build a business, how not to build a business, and how people of color should really focus their lives on ownership, okay? So I'm, I'm doing speaking engagements now. I'm starting to get booked up for March and April. Book me right away so I can help y'all, our brown kids, understand what it looks like to take ownership and have equity in something that's going to grow in the future. I'll let my uh, publicist for uh, more information. So. Come, come on, uh, that was a pretty good one, E. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, you didn't give them the number, you didn't give them no IG, you didn't give them so, no. Like, I thought you know this was the, I thought this was theoretical, so I can do it again. Okay. All right, so we what, Super Bowl commercial. What coach are Hundred million what? people watching. All right, so correct. So, and you really so, supposed to get one time. So, so I got you. I, again, You're on the camera, brother. Again, you know I, what I'm saying? I'm, do I'm, your I'm, thing. I'm like, okay, lights, I'm, camera. I misunderstood. So take, I, take. So, Three. My name is Eshawn Henderson. I buy houses. If you're going through, you know, divorce, if you're behind in your taxes, if, you know, you inherited the house, the uglier the house, the better. The uglier the house, the better. Uh, it's my job to buy your house in 14 days or less. Call me directly, 816-328-5323. That's what we're doing. That's what we're rocking with. Okay. Wait, can good. I really call that number? Yeah, uh, okay. Yeah, that's my number. Okay. okay. Really call that phone. That, that, you was really telling them to call yes, that's, 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 that's it. That's it. We, that's it. That's yeah. what we See, want to do. See, I'm trying to, to do. I misunderstood you. It's right. all good. Let me you tell know, you, divorce real estate it. is real. You know what I mean? It, it is. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, sure. what I do also want to do, I want to put them out. You just tell them what your number is. But I want you also tell them what your ID, how they get in touch with you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Anything, man. Tell them that. Only social media I have is Instagram. Okay. Uh, only social media I have is Instagram, and my Instagram handle is the real Eshan. Uh, my name is spelled E S I A N. It's the real Eshan. Holler at me. Give me a DM. I respond back. I will be on there. Just holler at me. All right, and give them that number again. If they got a house that they're yeah. trying to sell. Or anything. So I give referrals too, like up to <clears throat> two thousand bucks if I can buy your house. If you just know somebody who needs to sell their house anywhere in Kansas City, really anywhere in Missouri, sometimes Nebraska. Um, but my number is 816-328-5323. And the way I look at it is like, it's really my job to serve. Most people that need to sell their house to an investor, somebody like me, they going through something. So especially for, you know, folks that look like us, it's my job to serve these people and help them transition. So I've paid for movers. I've let people stay back in their house for 90 days rent free just because like, look, I'm trying to help. I, I, I do a lot to help them transition to whatever's next. In your life, trust me, it's just an ongoing it's thing. You so yeah, today. just just shoot yeah. me a text, and I, I if, if I can't help you, I'm definitely gonna point you in the direction of somebody who can. And I want the solution that's gonna be best for you. If it's better for you to list your house to make more money, do that. You know what I mean? I'll help you find somebody to help you get the maximum amount of money for your house. But again, a number eight one six three two eight five three two three. Just holler. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, I love that, man. I appreciate you being here today. We are going to come back with part two, and part two is going to be that straight financial literacy. We're going to put yeah. through there and teaching about why ownership is important and how. Absolutely, man. Anytime, bro. Just holler. All right. We're selling there. Man, I appreciate you. We are on Jenna Club TV. Uh, on YouTube channel. We appreciate this live stream brought to you by New Wall Street, an investment education community. Our episode partner uh, was Wilson's Pizza and Grill, 1801 Quindaro uh, in Kansas City, Kansas. Our lovely venue partner here at Kinship Cafe, 719 North 6th Street in Kansas City, Kansas. Our segment partners, uh, Drip Ultra Pure uh, Water, and then Sweeties Teas. Uh, we didn't get the Sweetie's to Teas, to man, tonight because we missed it. But he's going to try that tea. This is Sweetie's Teas by Miss Erin Jones, uh, another one of our segment partners. I'm talking about the best tea man. there is. <clears throat> now, I had to keep it low because we got the Pango border. He can't go, man, this my, the, the time bench pours out of Pango's, man, so I had to keep that back. Uh, but before we go, got to mention once again, man, please make sure you catch out uh, our brother's uh, podcast, The Gentleman's Talk. Uh, by Mr. Official. Make sure you catch that. And then do not forget, coming up next, our brother Chris Paul, Stick Talk Dunny. Stick Talk Dunny um, is coming up uh, with the Red Peel segment uh, that's coming after here. So don't uh, don't forget, make sure you tap in. All right, I am Coach Mo, and we out. <laughs>